Now for global business updates, Rotu Suduri joins us. Good morning, morning Doctor. Rose. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning good to morning, all our Rose. viewers out there. We begin in Asia, the really big news. Uh, a Hong Kong court uh, has ordered that Evergrande be liquidated. Uh, as you know, Evergrande was once China's biggest real estate firm. They've got liabilities totaling over $300 billion. Remember, they defaulted on U.S. dollar bond obligations in December of 2021. Um, the stock price fell about 20% and then was halted. There's a lot surrounding this. Um, I understand that uh, pre-liquidation officials have been, of, you know, been uh, appointed to take the assets of the company and see what they can sell. Lawyers for Evergrande did not want this to happen. They were pushing back and asking the judge in the Hong Kong court to give them some more time to try to get a last minute deal done. The judge said, this is enough. I've given you guys about, I think about a year and a half now um, to try to get something done, but it just didn't seem like there was enough uh, demand for somebody to come and take over because China's property market is in such serious trouble. There's a few complications here in that this is a court in Hong Kong. Is it going to be recognized uh, by the courts in mainland China? There was some agreement that was signed to where that's supposed to happen, but there have been a number of other liquidations that have been you know, uh, ordered in Hong Kong that are yet to be recognized on, on mainland China. So this is yet again highlighting the, proper, the issues with China's property markets and how it's, uh, it's you know, impacting sentiments uh, with respect to uh, China's economy. I think as we speak right now, they're still in court discussing a number of things. So, that, that's the big news coming out of, uh, of, of Asia. Um, then we move to, um, quickly to um, the PwC um, reports uh, for uh, Nigeria, um, which of course is, uh, I think, thinks on one, maybe one of the headlines on uh, this day newspaper um, or headlines on the fact that if this is just, in fact, uh, economic report, in fact, we have a senior partner from PwC joining us on the Global Business Report. So it gets into the seven trends that they see impacting um, the economy. Um, they talk specifically about um, foreign exchange uh, and how the collapse of multiple windows, those multiple FX windows, led to a devaluation. And I'm glad that they highlighted the fact that this was a devaluation, not a float or managed float as has been bandied about for so long. But anyway, removal of fuel subsidies, which cost $10 billion in 2022, as they pointed out, and the collapse of uh, multiple FX windows, which caused the Naira to depreciate by 98% between May and December of 2023, were key programs that were executed to spur growth and regain investor confidence. On the, where the exchange change rate is. I've been stressing over and over that this is still, we're in a period of price discovery. We had, of course, a clip from um, the NESG 2024 Macroeconomic Outlook, where the IMF representative, who, by the way, is from Cameroon, and so sorry about your loss uh, over the weekend at the African Nations Cup, uh, Dr. Ebeke, said that it is now is a tough time. It's tricky to try to determine where the Naira is. And you know, for a lot of folks that continue to bemoan where the exchange rate is, it needs to be stressed that there is, the reason why the exchange rate is moving where it is, is a lot to do with, with demand. And I've got three examples here. One, take a look at this. This is, this is a, a random birthday wish list from, from someone, right? Look at number one. Number one is money. Look at number two. It's human hair. And I, you can attest to the demand for human hair uh, by Nigerian women in particular. There's phone bags, whatever. If you look at the market for glueless wigs, right? According to Allied Market Research, it's a $719 million market. It is really big. It is projected to reach about 1.3 billion by 2023. Here in Nigeria, despite the devaluation of the currency, demand for wigs are extremely high. So the Ayos, the Vimbais, the Sheito and Tigaris, the Hawa Mukans, and everybody else that, that uses these wigs are still, and they are imported. They are not made here. Look at real estate. If we move to real estate, I met a real estate agent on Friday um, talking about, I asked her specifically, I was like, listen, are you still selling land and buildings in dollars? She said, yes. One of the reasons why is that a lot of these buildings that you're seeing that are being built are, they use um, a 
materials that are imported from overseas. A developer is not going to wait for however long to, in, to be paid in Naira when he or she can get their returns back uh, or get paid back in dollars, despite the fact that when it, when it, when in Nigeria and we use Naira, it is just a testament to the fact that the, the currency has lost value, and that's what we're seeing. Then, domiciliary account balances, as at November of last year, I think reached about 29 billion. This is the reason why Wale Edu continues to say that he is looking to try and incentivize uh, Nigerians to bring those dollars out and invest them in the economy. But it needs to be said, for everyone that has a domiciliary account balance, the Naira terms, they have appreciated because they are treating it as an asset. So th these are the things we've got to continue to remember when we talk about where the uh, exchange rate is. That's our, our update for, uh, for today. All right. Well, thanks, Rotus. I don't know why you came in this morning, this lovely Monday morning, to attack our wigs. Well, I, mean, I don't I, understand. Look, I, you have your right to wear whatever you want. I'm just saying this is but, the demand, yeah, but, I mean, you know? It's totally, the absolutely spot on in yeah. terms of that. I, I mean, it's the, it, the demand for well, wigs, beauty. That's why you've seen the beauty industry hasn't quite declined. Even globally, you've seen it appreciate. That if you look at the list of billionaires um, globally, a number of them play in the beauty space. You would understand why. But talking about that PwC, um, Nigeria Economic Outlook, I think it's quite a detailed report, even though it might leave you feeling a bit um, quite sad, almost, mm. you know, in terms of all, it has a depressing look. They mentioned a few um, potentials, a few wins, but it's centered on some of the key things or key decisions by this particular administration. In fact, you um, talked about the This Day report on that, which was quite, you know, really good, where they actually dug into finding out the former um, CBN governor, Gordon Mefile's take on the free, you know, on floating the Naira, yeah. and that it would have, it would cause the Naira to fall. This report states that 98% depreciation is what the Naira has, failed, has experienced since the unification yep. of the exchange rate. Now, this also, then you wonder who's speaking the truth, because according to the CBN governor, um, Yemi Cardozo, the Naira has been undervalued. Mm. In the last time we spoke about that, he had said it was being undervalued. But in this case, they're saying that actually it has lost real value of 98% since that. And we can see it play out. I would rather lean into this because if you look at the realities in terms of the exchange rate, as that I think today, um, 1,400 on the, on the, on the right. black market, right. you'd understand that. I think something else that they um, touched on the, in this report that was quite interesting was the, this foreign di you know, the issue around foreign direct investment. Yep. And the fact that it doesn't look very optimistic, As even though the president has been on this uh, mission of attracting FDIs, there have been a lot of um, trips abroad, he and his team. And what they've said is that because of the environment, it's not, number one, the um, capital repatriation challenges of this lab we faced. We talked about P&G last week. We talked about the airlines last week. We talked about a number of businesses who are not very enthusiastic about doing business in Nigeria because of this particular challenge. We look at also, um, he talked about the fact that the report details the importance of fiscal and monetary um, um, reforms that must happen for there to, for there to, to stimulate growth in the economy. We've talked about that a number of times. So we're going to be having the conversation again later on today. Um, he looked at the, um, you know, the, the report also details the, the environment for business and also some act, so the positive side where some of the reforms and policies by this administration that could potentially work out in the best in interest. Looked at the um, Electricity Act, looked at the Agricultural Act, looked at a few other policies that must happen and must be executed to ensure that we're able to, um, you know, we're able to manage the, the, the economy as it currently is. Mm. Now, I don't know where you stand because there have been arguments for and against free float of the Naira or, you know, to at least for the government to, to for it to be managed, for it to be a managed float to right. some extent. Right. A number of people following this particular um, reality um, of this administration, the reforms of this policy change of the administration have called for a managed float that we cannot afford to have a free float because the Naira will continue to sink, will continue to tank. Mm. Well, I don't know what your um, yeah. perspective so, on that so is. So that, that, it was interesting that that um, Godwin Emefele article, which was a 2019, 2019 article from yeah. Bloomberg, was yeah. floating around on. But you see, the issue is that the people who were pushing, you know, talking about it, didn't look at, no one ever looks at the other side. The Tribune had an article um, in 2022, I believe, saying that over the last seven months leading up to about July or so, 
that the CBN spent about $11 billion defending the currency. So you, you can't just talk about the fact that, oh, free floats is going to be an issue on this and that. How much are you spending in order to maintain a fixed peg? That's the reason why these windows were collapsed, because we could not maintain the peg, because we didn't have the reserves necessary to, to do that. As far as a free float is concerned, if you, if you float the currency, the issue is that how are you, you will, it will spike, right? And so they, they have to keep it, right, they have to keep, they have to keep a, a hand on the brake. So as we are now, we are still in a managed floats regime. The, the currency is not free floating. All we've seen has been a devaluation so far. Okay, let me start with Evergrande. Now that uh, the court has ordered, in fact this morning, uh, in Hong Kong, that the company should be liquidated. The foreign investors, having not been able to work out the deal that they said they will work out to restructure the company. And Evergrande is the largest property development uh, company in China, but it's been indebted to the tune of over $300 billion, $325 billion uh, in actual fact. So now it finds itself in this situation. Now, the fact that the court has asked for liquidation does not necessarily mean that the company will disappear or collapse. What it means is that its directors will lose control. They will no longer be in charge. The court will subsequently appoint a liquidator who will take over the affairs of the company. But in the uh, terms of the, uh, in, in the details, this will not affect the subsidiaries. And uh, you know, it, it, it also does not mean that mainland China will obey the court order mm. from Hong Kong. Only last week, the uh, People's <laughs> Bank of China and the Ministry of Finance uh, tried to introduce certain measures by, to, by which they hoped to pump liquidity into the proper market to save the property uh, sector in China. Because it's not just Evergrande. There are other companies mm -hmm. who will be affected. At a time, China is facing the challenge of slow economic growth, and the recovery has not been as e expected. Uh, then, of course, they had to do something. Another measure that China has taken, for example, is to set new rules for selling off of stocks, because there's been a run on most of the stocks in the uh, Chinese uh, market. And what they are trying to do, to have a fairer, fairer economic uh, climate, as they call it, is to put rules in place to limit what you can do with short selling. Mm. Short selling being seen as uh, a vicious speculative strategy that may not be in the best interest of uh, you know, other companies. But what we know is that China is not recovering at the rate uh, that you know, uh, its managers, its financial managers, expected that it would, uh, you know, uh, recover. But the property sector remains a major challenge. Now, to come to uh, Naira, we've been on this debate about how to save the Naira for more than 20 years. How many editorials did you do on how to save the Naira and all of that? In 1986-87, under the, the Bangida administration, they introduced something they called the second tier uh, exchange uh, system, SPEM. It was the first time that Nigeria will introduce a dual exchange uh, system. But all the times we have introduced a dual exchange system, it did not work because it will only create room for arbitrage. It will create room for people who want to uh, beat the system. Okay, now let's fast forward. In 2023, we now have this single market exchange rate, following the recommendations of IMF and World Bank and our local economists, many of whom, for the most part, just parrot the textbook <laughs> or what they hear from, uh, from, the, uh, <laughs> from the US or from the UK. And it is not working. This is the point of the uh, PwC. So the question to ask is, why are those policies not working? They can't work because the Nigerian leadership itself sabotages the Naira. I've made a point on this uh, uh, program. There are many agencies in this uh, country that collect rent in dollars. There are schools that collect uh, uh, school fees in dollars, including government agencies, right? And then, of course, we say we are selling our oil in, uh, in, uh, in dollar terms. Okay, where is all that money going? What, they've been promising that they will provide liquidity in the, 
in the uh, uh, dollar market and all that. They've not been able to do so. So there is the repatriation of uh, of uh, the repatriation of capital has been impossible. Investors are not enthusiastic to come here. The ones that are already here are leaving because they cannot repatriate their capital. Procter and Gamble, for example, that changes uh, business model. Uh, Emirates that decided to stay away from the Nigerian market. So how do they do it in other countries that they are not faced with this kind of situation? And if we're looking for how they do it in other countries, I'm not recommending the example of Argentina or Venezuela. Mm -hmm. There are countries where you know, macroeconomic indicators are better taken care of rather than all this mouthing of uh, platitudes that we, have, we hear all the time. Now, finally, our economy is not a productive economy. We are not uh, producing anything. Okay, they say NACO is trying to beat, uh, build a one billion uh, cargo export. Uh, this, uh, maybe some people are looking for an opportunity to award their uh, contracts. Right. Because if you look at the details of what uh, they say they want to do at that NACO facility, how to package farm produce. Uh, very well, how to ensure freight, how to make sure that uh, farm produce don't get spoiled. That's where we are in 2023. 15 years ago, we were talking about pre-shipment inspection in the same country at the ports. So it's the same thing that they say they are doing for farm produce. What happened to finished products? Those who, who say they are looking for forex, they are looking, they are still talking in 2023 about uh, exporting farm produce through this same Motala Mohammed airport, which farm produce are they, are they exporting? Why can't we have finished products from here so that we produce, not a, a, an import-dependent economy, you know, importing things that it can produce here and that it can finish products that it can export to the international market. So the, these distortions are there. Mm. So the economists, yes, they will quote the textbooks, but at least we can see the evidence of uh, what is going on finally. The question I, I reserve for you. Mm. The uh, CBN under Cardoso now yep. says uh, the Monetary Policy Committee is going to meet February 26, 27. Yes. It's a 15 member MPC. Now they say they are going to reconstitute that uh, committee. But the uh, uh, non CBN members of that committee, mm. five of them, they say that since August, their uh, entitlements have not been paid. Since September, the CBN under Cardoso has not been communicating with them. Now we're told new members of the MPC will be uh, appointed. That meeting they are talking about is going to be on February 26, February 27. The CBN Act, Section 12, which outlines the composition of the Monetary uh, Policy Committee, identifies who and who will be a member and how forum, quorum will be formed. If they don't make those appointments, can they hold that uh, monetary policy meeting and follow the calendar that they have advertised? They will, you have, I see your, they will be in violation of the acts. Uh, but as you know, doctor, there's an investigation going on, members of a prior regime and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, you're, 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 they would be in violation of the act if those uh, members are not instituted. And that, as far as far what I expect, hiking is going to continue. We're going to see um, rate hikes in order to try to arrest inflation. Whether it has worked, our last benchmark rate was 18.75%. Whether it's going to work, evidence has shown it hasn't. So fiscal side has to step in as well. But yeah, still lots going on on the monetary policy okay. side. Thank you, Rutus. Thank you. Thank so you. Much.